Hello students, in this video, we will have an introduction to Laplace transformation. We will understand what is the importance of Laplace transformation in this video. Let us start with introduction to Laplace transformation now. In Laplace transformation, we use a variable called as S, called as Laplace variable. So understand, S means a Laplace variable. In fact, this type of variable is a complex variable. When it comes to complex variable, it will have a real part and imaginary part. So S is basically given as sigma plus j omega, where sigma stands for real part, indicates an attenuation whereas omega is your imaginary part which indicates frequency part and then we should know something called as s domain what is exactly mean by s domain so it's just a four quadrant system like this which will have positive sigma that is positive x axis negative x axis is minus sigma positive y axis is positive j omega and negative y axis is minus j omega this is your first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant like this this is what we called as s domain also called as laplace domain or in fact it is called as s plane rather now the question begins why to go for Laplace domain? Understand, Laplace domain means frequency domain. So it is nothing but the frequency domain. When it comes to system analysis, you can perform analysis in two ways. You can go for time domain approach, or time domain analysis or you can have frequency domain analysis time domain analysis is the analysis that we have done so far the kvl that we apply kcl that we apply we do everything in time domain in fact all the transient analysis that we have done so far is nothing but time domain approach because every time we take integration or every time we take derivative it is all with respect to time now why to come to frequency part or why to go for frequency domain because there are certain issues with time domain the complexity sometimes in the time domain because of integration imagine what if your integration becomes simple division what if your derivative becomes simple multiplication what if in time domain you got a trigonometry part it becomes simply normal algebraical parts meaning that your Laplace makes your life easy. In fact, Laplace transformation make it very easy for you to analyze the circuit. Of course, Laplace transformation have got many applications, but we will see Laplace applications in terms of electrical circuits. But that application we should actually see in the next video lecture. In this video, we will actually understand the basics of Laplace transformation and basic formulas which are needed for Laplace transformation analysis. So with these two time domain as well as frequency domain analysis, frequency domain analysis becomes easier approach because your integration becomes simple division here. Your derivative part becomes normal multiplication here. In fact, there are special signals with which we cannot have time domain approach because of which we go for frequency domain approach which is nothing but Laplace domain approach. So if you see advantages of Laplace transformation over time domain, the first advantage you will see, the calculation becomes easy, right? I can give you some real time example where we will actually go for frequency domain analysis over time domain. I'm sure you must have come across such waveform which I'm drawing right now. 
that's what we call as amplitude modulated wave right this amplitude modulated wave is drawn with respect to time that's what we call as time domain signal right now if somebody ask you what is meant by bandwidth here what is a bandwidth here bandwidth means range of frequency over which the information is available means looking at this information nobody can tell you what is exactly is bandwidth is what you need to do is you have to transform this signal into frequency domain so by transforming this into frequency domain you get such type of information where this is fc component this is fc plus fm component this is fc minus fm component so now if you see this is the range of frequency over which the information is available so if you calculate upper frequency minus lower frequency if you do you will get twice of fm as bandwidth so as you can see to get bandwidth you should have frequency on the x axis whereas to get time domain information you have t on x axis to get frequency information you bound to convert time domain signals to frequency domain signals to convert from time domain to frequency domain there are many transformation tools available in mathematics like fourier domain that is fourier analysis or laplace transformation so bandwidth in this case is twice of fm so to get bandwidth of course you should have frequency domain analysis right so these are some reasons why we go from time domain to frequency domain let's come back to our topic that is laplace transformation now so now we'll see important formulas which are required for our analysis first you should know e raised to minus 80 dot u of t is having laplace as 1 upon s plus a remember this relation is bidirectional meaning that e raised to minus 80 into u of t have got laplace as 1 upon s plus a at the same time 1 upon s plus a is having inverse laplace as e raised to minus 80 dot u of t second you should know t raised to n into u of t is having laplace as n factorial upon s raised to n plus 1 third you should know a trigonometry signal which is let's say sin bt dot u of t which is given as b upon s square plus b square whereas for cos bt dot u of t it's simply s upon s square plus b square fifth property you should know is let's say e raised to minus 80 dot sin bt u of t check it out the formula of sin bt says b upon s square plus b square here the moment e raised to minus 80 comes just to replace s with s plus a because you know the fact that e raised to minus 80 is having laplace as 1 upon s plus a so wherever there is s just to replace s with s plus a in sin bt formula so now it becomes b upon s plus a the whole square plus b square similarly you should know e raised to minus 80 dot cos bt u of t has formula as s plus a upon s plus a the whole square plus b square so these are the standard formulas that should be known to you for understanding laplace transformation also we will see laplace transformation for spatial signals this spatial signals are standard signals like u of t that is unit step input unit step input is denoted as u of t in time domain it looks like this right u of t have got laplace as 1 upon s you have to remember this whereas when you have unit ramp unit ramp is the signal which you will look like this having slope as 1 and that's the reason why it is called as unit ramp it is given as 1 upon s square as a laplace transform suppose you come across unit impulse signal which is present only at t equal to 0 denoted as delta of t or delta t is having laplace transform simply as 1 
So these three signals should be known to you. Unit step signal gives you 1 by S. Unit ramp gives you 1 upon S square. And unit impulse gives you simply 1. And last we have to see is time shifting property. Suppose you have f of t having Laplace transform as f of s, then f of t minus t naught, suppose you have this, it is delayed by t naught value, then its Laplace transform is again simply f of s only, but you need to just take a product with e to the power minus s times t naught. Please understand this minus t naught is replaced here minus here and t naught here it is just s coefficient right so for example if you have to get u of t minus 4 laplace transform you know the fact that the original function is u of t and u of t have got laplace as 1 upon s you have to just take a product of e to the power minus 4 s now as you can see t naught is nothing but 4 and because of negative sign the negative appears here similarly let's say if you have r of t minus 2 then it's laplace transform is original function is r of t which is unit ramp signal is having laplace transform as 1 upon s square so r of t minus 2 laplace becomes e to the power minus 2 s times 1 upon s square similarly suppose we have del of t minus 6 then its Laplace transform is simply e to the power minus 6s times 1 because del of t is having Laplace transform as 1. So this is about uh, introduction to the Laplace transformation. Thank you.